Hey, it's so good to see you again. Just a quick update. My search for a golf course clubhouse to present these videos to you from continues. They don't like me writing on the wall, turns out. Been thrown out a couple. I'm not going to show you that. Uh, we're going to talk about how to have more focus during your round and play your A-game shot more often. An absolutely critical skill. If you think about your last round, think about the best shots you hit, right? And now think about the worst shots you hit. I'll place a bet that there's a pretty big gap between the two. And if you could just uh, hit your best shots more often, easier said than done, I understand that. But if you could do that, and if you could make your mistakes less severe, then you would improve your scores and your handicap without actually changing anything about your golf game, right? Because you're the one hitting those better shots. But in order to do that, you've got to be able to keep your focus on each and every shot, because it's an unforgiving game that me and you both love, right? So uh, let's talk about some practical ways to do that, to get you more focused during your round and get you able to hit your best shot more often. Four of them, in fact. One of them is before you play, three of them are out on the course. Now, the one before you play is your expectations. So set expectations. A little bit vague because you could set some completely outrageous expectations, like I'm going to shoot 67 today. Um, so what I want to talk about here is setting expectations that are realistic and then taking them with you out onto the course. Because I want, I want you to be able to do is keep a clear head and a positive attitude every round that you play. I've done it many times myself, and I'm sure you have, where your bad shot is not just a bad shot because it's not great, it's a bad shot because it causes your next shot to be bad as well, because you get frustrated, you don't give that next shot enough care and attention. And this can happen in big ways where you hit two or three bad shots in a row, but it can also happen in small ways where, say, you hit an iron shot that you think is good, but it rolls through the green, and then when you get to your chip, you're so annoyed you're not on the green that you rush the chip, right? So I want to talk about expectations because this can allow you to overcome that problem. It's vital that you are realistic about how well you can play golf every time you play. So think about where your game is now. And I want you to think about what your average score is or what your handicap is. And let's say for argument's sake, your handicap is 18 because that makes the maths easy, right? Um, and I like to keep it easy for me. If your handicap's higher or lower, you can adjust uh, based on what I'm about to say. But if it's 18, you're going to take one over the regulation par uh, for every hole you play on average. And you know that within that, you're going to hit some disappointing shots. Every golfer in the world hits disappointing shots, even the best player in the world, whether that's Dustin Johnson or Jordan Spieth or whoever it is, they all hit bad shots. So you're going to hit bad shots. And if you're shooting 18 handicap or 24 handicap, and you're going to shoot somewhere around 90 or 95 or even 85, you know you're going to hit some bad shots. So there's no reason for you to get frustrated when it happens, apart from the fact that obviously you're a human being and we all get affected when we don't do well. But you can try a couple of tricks to actually help your expectations be more realistic when you're playing. So the first trick is to think about how many bad shots you hit per round. So let's continue our example of being an 18 handicapper. Let's say that you're shooting one over every hole you play. So out of your five shots, one of them is not going to be as you intended. And then you might hit three or four brilliant shots in your round and you might hit three or four disasters. So let's come up with a number. Let's say 20 of your shots out of your 90 shots are going to be disappointing. What you can do on your phone or the scorecard or a notepad is put 20 circles or lines or whatever. And every time you hit a disappointing shot, you can cross one of them out when you're out on your round. Now, what this will do is it'll give you a running tally of how well or badly you're playing that day. But more than that, it will bring home the fact to you that you've hit a disappointing shot, but it's not the end of the world. And it should just break that pattern of getting frustrated, getting your head down and not being able to really focus. So try that out. It can really be a powerful uh, help. The other thing that can help you is having a bogey mindset. So if you go round in 18 over par, for example, then... Uh, you should view the golf course as an 18 over par golf course. So a par four becomes a par five for you. If you're a 36 handicapper, it becomes a par six for you. If you're somewhere in between, the hardest nine holes become two over par and the rest become one over par. You can work it out for yourself based on your handicap. Have a realistic expectation of how many shots you're supposed to complete every hole in because it's not the par of the course. That is for scratch golfers, which you and I are not. 
So you need to adjust your expectations that will stop your frustration and it will help you give more value to each shot you take. So a really cool little trick and it will help you keep a much more positive aspect on your round and stop the wheels from coming off. All right. Now to help you keep focus on the course, three concrete tips you can use. First is a playing zone, a playing zone. So I think it's quite important to have fun when you play golf and hopefully you've got playing partners you can have fun with or if you happen to go out on your own, you enjoy your own company or whatever. You don't want to be obsessing over golf the entire time. One of the secrets that you can find out if you talk to a pro is that a key part of their pro caddy relationship is that the caddy can talk to them about stuff that's got nothing to do with the round because it's very important to switch off between shots. Otherwise you wear yourself out in terms of just worrying about what shots you're going to hit. But also you can think and obsess too much over bad shots and mistakes and that's not what we want. So have fun when you play, talk about different things. But then when you come to your ball, you want to have the physical sensation of stepping into a playing zone. So you can talk about whatever you want walking up the fairway. You get within a few steps of your ball and start to think concretely about your shot and flick a switch and really bring yourself into focus on that shot. It's vitally important that you can bring yourself into the now for each shot. And this is incredibly important if you've just hit a bad one because what we want to stop is one bad shot becoming two or three or four bad shots. So every shot is new and you can trigger that in yourself by thinking I'm stepping into my playing zone now when I'm two or three steps away from the ball. If you've had a complete disaster and you have to drop in the same place or reshoot from the tee or, you know, it does happen, move a couple of steps because you've chunked a chip or something, you can even turn away for a second, clear your brain, take a deep breath, then turn back and go into your playing zone. Um, you don't have to use this language, you can call it whatever you like, but do something that creates focus on that shot because golf is an unforgiving game. It counts every single shot the same, as you know, and if you're going to score your best to get your handicap down, doing this will really help you out. Next up, a pre-shot routine. A pre-shot routine. Now, I'm sure you know what a pre-shot routine is. You probably have one. And actually, even if you haven't put any thought into your pre-shot routine, it's probably quite similar every time because we're all creatures of habit. Now, when you think about a pre-shot routine, it's possible to think that's for the pros and I don't want to play slowly and all of that kind of stuff. It shouldn't slow down the round that much, in fact. And it is really important that you get into this habit. Now, Jared Tendler, the uh, uh, mental game psychologist, uh, I interviewed him recently and he said he thinks that recreational players shouldn't spend too much time on a pre-shot routine, but should have one, but that it should be simple. Because there's the danger of having too much going on. You're kind of visualizing, thinking about it, wondering about the club. You're um, taking lots of practice swings and all that stuff. This can actually be an overcomplication, so we don't want that. You want something simple that focuses you. Now, I'm not going to be prescriptive. It's completely up to you. Uh, but to give you an idea, you might ask yourself what your outcome is for the shot as step one. Make a defensive decision, not an aggressive decision. Golf usually rewards defensive thinking, especially if we're, you know, uh, 12 handicapper and up. We'll leave the aggression to the pros, right? We're going to be conservative and take sh and make decisions on taking shots we can pull off 80, 90% of the time. Decide your shot, visualize it briefly, maybe take one or maximum two practice swings and then hit your shot. Something simple like that, but experiment and find what works for you. But simple is often better, but have a pre-shot routine every time, including your putts, and this will stop you rushing and keep you focused, right? This is all about being focused on the now when you actually take a golf shot so that we minimize your disasters and you hit good shots more often. And finally, try and have one swing thought, one swing thought. If you've got lots of distractions, if you've got lots of ideas in your head, I'm sure you know, because you'll have done it, it becomes impossible to hit a good shot, right? If you're thinking about, the water and the wind and you didn't hit a good five iron last time you hit a five iron and the lie's not very good and I'm trying to get my hands in the right position and turn the right amount and not move my head and you're thinking about 18 different things, you are screwed, right? You're not going to hit a good shot. Just give yourself focus through the task, you know, so you don't autopilot, you actually have focus and do that by having one swing thought. Now this needs to be something that's going to work for you. It could relate to something that you're trying to correct in your game or you're trying to get right. Very often the one I use is back of the ball contact. So I focus with my irons off the fairway, for example, with the top back of the ball and think about making a good solid strike downwards. 
and think about that contact and really focus on it through the shot. That's one thing you can use. If you struggle with getting your club in the wrong position or getting off swing plane, you could focus on the takeaway. So you could make your first move your best move and, and focus on getting the, the club on the right path over the first foot on the takeaway. Another one you can use is to think about your finish. So if you think about your finishing position, I'm left-handed, so I go this way. If you think about your finishing position, belt buckled to the target, hands high and through. If you think about that, then your uh, conscious brain will deliver your uh, hands and body through the ball to your finishing position. So that can be a good way of getting through the ball. Putting, you might just think smoothly through, smoothly through. Try, I'm just giving you a few ideas. Try whatever works for you, but try and have one swing thought so that you're concentrated on the task, but not obsessing. If you try these things and really focus when you play, you can save shots the next time you play without doing anything new or different to your game. So this can be really valuable. I hope you've enjoyed it and got some value from it. Try it the next time you play. I really hope it saves you some shots because we want to get your handicap down and get you having more confidence and fun on the course. If you've liked this video, give it a like underneath the video. Leave me a comment or a question if you have one. I'd love to know what you think and uh, I'm happy to discuss with you any other ideas you have for getting better focus. All right. Enjoy playing your best shots more often. I'll see you in another one of these videos very soon.